Now, having a th have, have a think about um, patients who might be watching this you know, video later on and they're getting some very useful advice already, but I wonder if there's any other tips you'd have from what you've been through that you could think, well, you know, I noticed that this was a problem for me and people should watch out for that, or is there anything else that you can think that you, you would like other patients to know? I think that if you feel that you want to, um, the hospitals normally give you quite a good leafleting area and, and support with breast care nurse that you can ring. Um, I think for me there was the drop-in centre at the local hospital uh, where there were leaflets and people you could talk to because at one point I didn't know whether I was going to be paid about my job and things like that. Um, all those things help to add to your fear and anxiety in general about around the illness. Um, I wish I'd known that, for example, you didn't have to have your wig um, from the hospital site if you are an NHS patient. Mm. You could take a prescription elsewhere, mostly. Um, I really struggled with um, the lack of support around my wig, unfortunately. It just wasn't there and um, I had to go elsewhere but I had to make a lot of um, inquiries before I realised that there was some flexibility with that. Mm. So I think it's important that you try and prepare yourself for that before your hair starts falling out, before your chemo starts. Even if you don't think you're going to have chemo at the beginning of your cancer journey, it might just be wise to explore those avenues before you start chemo because you don't want the stress of chemo, dealing with hair loss and then having to look around for your wig. Mm. Um, so that's quite a good tip. I think as well when your hair starts growing back, you should try and empower yourself by making it as funky as you can. Mm. Um, if you've had long hair before, go for something really short and spiky and perhaps a bright colour even if you can <laughs> cope with that or you know it's not going to damage your scalp or cause you a problem. Because then you've said to yourself, well, you know, the cancer has taken part of me, but it's not taken all of me. Mm. I am still there, and I'm in the driving seat. Mm. So for me, that that was quite a good tip to do. Um, and again, I think if you are starting to get distressed and anxious, don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel that you've got to be professional about it, that you've got to be a professional patient who is not showing anxiety um, try and speak to the support network around you with oncology because you might talk to your oncologist about certain things and say you're worried and they have, again, they are busy people, they haven't got long in their um, session with you mm -hmm. to go through those things and, and ask if there are any support mechanisms around emotionally mm -hmm. or if you don't feel able to do it perhaps you can get a family member to do it um, so maybe one thing is to go and ask what resources are available, yes. wherever you have been treated. Yes, because you do keep coming to the hospital and it is a bit of a, um, a treadmill that mm. you're on and you keep coming for the chemo appointment and yes that's another one down and you rush off out of the hospital and the same for the radiotherapy and the radiotherapy is quite intense because some of them you have a lot of sessions every day and it's a big part of your life mm. and it's easy to go down that road and be getting a bit depressed about it, a bit anxious without realising and then all of a sudden, like myself, you have a sort of emotional explosion in the middle of it because you've got to that stage and you haven't or been aware of any support mechanism mm. emotionally for you there mm. in place. I certainly didn't know that mm. until I had this situation with radiotherapy. Mm. Now, now looking back on your treatment as a whole, would you say you're satisfied with the care you received? Would you say the quality of the care you received was, was adequate for you? I would say yes, to some extent, um, not in others. I think that I would have liked a lot more um, information at the time of getting uh, breast cancer and going through the treatments. Nobody at any time while I was going through chemotherapy, for example, 
um, said, well, there are people that you can talk to mm. about this outside of the medical treatment you've been given. Nobody said on that chemo suite. Mm. Um, if you are getting more and more frightened about cannulations and coming physically into the chemo, it's become an environmental thing into the chem chemo suite mm. and things like that. Nobody at any time said there is somebody who psychologically could help you mm. or you. it's not wrong the feelings that you're having, Julie. You, they are, you don't have to bury them because you feel that they're bad mm. or that they're not appropriate. Mm. You don't have to be the big, brave soldier. You can offload that and you've got every right to feel that way and there is support for that. Mm. At no time was I told that until I'd actually broken down in a public environment, in a public place. Mm. That was very distressing for me because having gone through all that emotionally, I was in an area where uh, I was just off a radiotherapy waiting area. Everybody could hear the fact that I was extremely distressed mm. and my husband had to be sent for to come it, to me. Mm because I wasn't physically capable yeah. of walking out of the room. And then I had to walk through a waiting area full of people. Mm. Obviously, I've been very distressed. Mm. I thought that was the very negative thing, mm. to have to get to that stage Until before was help was to. looked at. I think what's happening there, if I may, is that the staff are not picking up on something when it's in evolution, when it's you know, yeah. doubling up, and unfortunately, because of probably resources or focus on mm -hmm. other things, yes. they're not looking at those emotional sides the, the same way that, as you said earlier, it'd be nice if they did. But when things go into a kind of catastrophic level, you know, suddenly they all realise, oh yes, you know, we need to do something, and then everybody rushes around to mm -hmm. try to help. But by that stage, it's a shame that it's got to that point, isn't it? Because um, in a way, the earlier you help somebody with almost any issue, the less severe that issue becomes. Yes. And it's the same for psychological.